Mina, I'm genuinely torn on where to start with you because I know Stugatz wants to talk to you about what the Texans are doing. I know everybody uh, wants to hear uh, from you on Stefan Diggs. I know that Stugatz wants to give you a, a bit of advice on how to correctly do the take, uh, the take game in April because he has, <laughs> you might think to yourself that you have a better take than any of his takes, but he has a top five list of quarterbacks who have the most pressure on them in April, <laughs> in April. And you can't do anything that good. And I'm just wondering if you'd like for us to unveil that or just talk to you about how it is that I'm a left wing Marxist because I have racist Jamel Hill on my show every week. Hmm. Let's hear the takes or the quarterbacks. Wow. Good choice. <laughs> as much as I want to yeah. hear about how you're a, what was it? A racist? A left wing Marxist. Marxist. No, mm. Jamel. Oh, oh. Your microphone's not on. Well, that's not my not fault. Not his fault. Yeah. I can't turn it on then. Mm -hmm. As opposed to those right wing Marxists is what your joke yeah. was. <laughs> uh, not well, on the know. microphone. It's a spectrum. Um, yeah, let's hear what you got. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm going to be the stand-in for the audience and choose the, the obvious, most pop, most Thank enjoyable you. choice. Thank uh, you. Is there no ally or is it just top five? Just a straight five, Dan. Now, this is uh, me and Tony. We were up you know, early in the morning. I mean, 4 a.m.? Yeah, 4 a.m. Like, and taking people's you ass. F. You know, I wanted a certain quarterback on this list. Tony didn't. Tony ended up winning that fight. And so we have a straight top five right here. Yeah. Now I want to guess who that quarterback is. Let me hear your five, and then okay. I want to guess who I, you left I, off. All right. Okay. Well, I think I'd like to hear Mina's five, or does it ruin your five if Mina does anything around? I, because I don't believe she can actually beat you at this game. Oh. I believe that this is a game that you have mastered and that Mina will lose, but Sounds I don't like know how to best play it. So that uh, what are you making faces about, Mina? You think you can win this game? You think you've gotten strong enough to win this game? <laughs> I mean, I do get asked, like, we're joking about the very premise of this as though I don't get asked this exact question on first take once a week, who's <laughs> under the most pressure. In April? All right, well, let's see whose yes. list is better then. So do you think off the top of your head you can do a top okay. five list and we will do but, rival top five list, most quarterbacks with the most pressure? You think Rather you than a, a top five, I'm going to try to guess who's on seat. Okay. Oh, okay, I, I like, like that. that. That's, okay, and yes. but you're not going to give it away, and so you're just going to write it down while it is that he's talking. No, no, or no, no, no. I'm I'm going to do one. I'm going to go one for one. You tell me if he's on your list, okay? Okay. All right. Okay. So this is all practiced. Uh, my uh, technique, my effort, my understanding of Stu Gott's brain <laughs> forged in the first take fires mm -hmm. beginning. It quarterbacks, right? Yes. Uh, yes. This, uh, okay. this this is the part I need to explain to the audience, okay? Uh, Mina takes on great, uh, difficult uh, scaffolding challenges, whether they are crossword puzzles or this, the hardest of all the games. <laughs> Figure out what Stugatz is going to do based on all the permutations involved here of in April, who does the pressure have to be on? And Mina, who's a preparation freak, is going to do this on the fly. You think you're good enough at the Stugatz language to be able to actually pull this off you're welcoming this this challenge i mean i just know who the guys are it's the same okay dak dak uh, dak 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 yeah well we'll see i mean okay Stu, right. is dak on your list i know he, she's asking you Stu got <laughs> he's saying <laughs> you know he's I'm saying, saying no he's dak saying, is oh. not on my list Thank Thank you. You. that's too obvious How? to put dak on the list he'll be on august uh yeah. mina you gotta go to like Stu got's 201. You yeah. went to God's 101. We're in what? April. Yeah. She thinks she's good at this game, no. and I'm like, Mina, I don't care how good you are at these puzzles. This, this puzzle, I mean, this is the greatest in sports media. Like, <laughs> you can't do this better than him. Mina, this is, in, a, this is in freshman class. This is Tony. We're, we're Jack is in a declare. contract year He and, and has been dinged for hitting his – uh, ceiling in the playoffs. How is Dak not on your list? I'm actually interested in why you didn't put Dak on your list. Because it's April, that's why. I'm curious, what's the difference between pressure in April and August? Oh, like, you don't what? get Big it. You, he doesn't difference. get it. Different kind of pressure. <laughs> <laughs> Can you explain it to me? I'm asking. <laughs> well, that's your answer. That's how you lose <laughs> arguments it's in America. April. Can you explain it's it to me? I'd, I'd like to learn. I'd like to understand, and that's the answer. Just so, It's April. You know what I feel like? It's April. Have you, did you guys watch the show Mindhunter? on Netflix. It was best. unfortunately canceled. So good, right? And for the listeners who haven't watched it, it's about, um, I think it was the FBI, not the CIA, whatever, these detectives basically trying to get into the minds of serial killers by spending time with serial killers. I feel like now, this your, your omission of Dak Prescott, I feel like 
like Mine <laughs> Hunter for child or something. Like I'm trying to get into Stu. Bo- now instead of thinking, there's like a second layer to this game because instead of thinking who is the quarterback who is actually under pressure, I have to think not only who does Stu Gotts think is the quarterback under pressure, but who does Stu Gotts think is the quarterback under pressure at this arbitrary moment in time? That's right, uh-huh. April. Yeah. Uh-huh. uh-huh. M- Mina has just entered it. the second level of Westworld. Right, yeah. like at first, it's like I'm just a cowboy. Should be, but I was like, no, no. There's another game within the game. Exactly that, right. That Anthony Hopkins built into this, and that's what you're searching for now. Yeah. And and, and it's really hard. So we'll show, I think I'll just go to the list because will you admit defeat now, or do you want to keep trying? No, to guess? I'll throw another one out there. Um, Kirk Cousins. Nope. <laughs> oh wow! Over oh, two. <laughs> that's April. That's more. Yeah. It's, it's more July, it's August, August, for Kirk. Yeah, yeah, September, yeah. maybe. So it's not this April. is going to be really stupid. Basically. What? What? Whoa! Whoa! Whoa. Whoa. Sorry, sorry. What? Mina. What? Mina. They got up at four. This is what it always I'm is with you, condescending you liberals. No, I don't like losing. You guys don't know. I don't like failing at tests. I didn't mean it. I was lashing out. <laughs> that I just was want to take it back. Uh, I was. It, it was. Oh. oh. Jeez. Oh, God. Jeremy, yeah. Jeremy, get out. That? You know what? Mike sure told me to kick you out every time you talk for a week. Just every single time, Mike wow. sure told me. Just don't, don't let you. he doesn't s- want to hear heat takes. Don't Let's let be you honest. say anything. He Ooh. said every single time for a week. Hmm. Uh, Mina, do, right, you, do you want to take another guess it. or you just no, want them um, to take one more, Mina? Okay. Uh, Russell Wilson. <laughs> <laughs> Why is she so Russell bad at this? Why is she so, it's not, she's so bad at this? She's so bad at this. in April because so he's actually in a quarterback competition <laughs> at this. More than any other quarterback, he should be on your list. It's August. It's That's 30 million enough. guaranteed. You don't know anything, Mina. You're a fool. You don't know how to take tests. Number five, Bryce Young. Oh. <laughs> Why now or Bryce never. Young? Now or never, Mina. The windows are short in the NFL. C.J. Stroud was selected ahead of him. Now or never. This year yeah. or it will never happen for Bryce. That would make sense in August. Mm. It's April. Okay, yeah. fine. Mm. Number four. <laughs> Number Jordan Love. <laughs> Welcome to the world of expectations. Jeremy looks like a ghost. Mina, though. why are you shocked? Why are you open-mouthed I- shocked? Because Jordan Love is in a fantastic situation. Mm -hmm. For now. Okay, keep going. A lot of pressure. No one expected anything out of the Packers and Jordan Love last year. Now everyone is expecting them in a bad NFC to get to a Super Bowl. Pressure. (laughs) He almost got to the Super Bowl last year. Well, he did it. Expectations, Dano. Mm -hmm. Number three. C.J. Stroud. Welcome to the world of expectations. Mm-hmm. That's no all, one that's, expected that's anything got. last year. That's got to he, the playoffs. He's great. <laughs> now they got him weapons. That's they all. got him mixing. They yeah. got him digs. He already has Tank Dell. He's got Nico Collins. That team is really good. And Dalton Schultz. Expectations. Pressure. So he it's won't it. have that in August? Well, he's got it now. Sure. Yeah, he's got it now. It he happened. It just in. happened. He might still have it in August. Throwing in mm-hmm. And Dalton Schultz mm-hmm. is really Good tight end. Do it's you, an all-in move, Dano. Yeah. Uh, everyone loves it's saying this. Move. Aren't it they is. almost always all in when they've got the quarterback who's great and cheap? Like you uh, got now you get it. You got, <laughs> now <laughs> you get why April no. was such a massive month Thank for you. CJ Stroud. Right. No, Mina, were you saying no? Oh, well, no, I would say not every team has done it. Uh we I mean, I guess we can talk about this when we talk about the trade later. I would say like the Colts have a quarterback on a rookie contract and don't appear to be acting in a similar fashion. But CJ Stroud is such a terrible answer. It's year two. Even if he regresses a little bit he still has two years left plus mm-hmm. the fifth year option on his rookie contract like the, the premise that he is under more pressure than the likes of Dak Prescott who has who is who's on, in his final year and is due for a big contract is right. whatever anyways it's my list no Mina this is, this is like Mina, fighting a ghost no it's not like fighting a ghost Mina this is what I'd like to do though if I can bring out this part of your personality that others I don't believe have ever unearthed on television <laughs> enraged Mina by Stugatz's <laughs> general <laughs> arbitrary stupidity but normally on, I make her happy I, I, I mean, know but the, no but she's been doing too much first take and she's in the machine now she's given her takes and they have to have no, some honor and <laughs> Not about who, that. who has the you most know. pressure has to have more honor than you can just switch it from April to August based on how Stugatz feels like <laughs> marking the calendar. Here's the thing. I part of the reason I love Stu is I'm I'm usually not like a like a relaxed person mm. when it comes to <laughs> opinions. Right. But you gamified it, or maybe I guess I gamified it. And 
the second something becomes a game or a competition, there's, there's a part of my lizard brain that just starts beeping and activating. And the reason why I'm getting a little bit irritated by the uh, total lack of logic behind this list. <laughs> no, no offense. He disrespects uh, the top five list by giving it this little reason. My list. It, 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 it's, it's, it's more about me than you, Stu. It's a reflection on me and my lack of um, self-esteem. So. Me, Mina, Please is that on. nature or nurture? Hmm. It's nature. It's pure nature. Will you pass it along to your seed, to your progeny? First of all, never call him my seed again. What was ah! that? Like, what is that? Because I couldn't remember whether it was, it was Instantly a boy Instantly awkward when so you did that. that. So. Oh, wow. Um, so you wait, no. you, wait a minute. Progeny. You did the move. Wait a minute. You did the move to a, ma a baby that I do to people whose names I can't recognize and they expect me to know them. I call them chief. <laughs> <laughs> or chief's a good one. Or, or hey, handsome. Or you should use monstro. Boss. Handsome. Yes. Estrella. Do you expect to pass Believe it on it. to your chief? But seed? Seed? You call him little fella. Little fella. Um, he's a big fella. No, I'm actually very uncompetitive with like um, milestones and, and and is he doing? You know, when people ask, is he crawling? Is he, um, you know, sitting upright for more than 15 seconds? I really, I'm not really super worried about that oh, stuff. Man. Yeah, it's crazy. this is my uh, Virgo ness. All of my control freak and competitive nature as like the, the aspects of my personality are all only about myself. So, so Stu, please keep going with your excellent list. Uh, my commentary on it is not a reflection on the quality of the list or the integrity of your choices, but mm. rather my own <laughs> frustration with my inability to predict them. Thank Number you. two. <laughs> Caleb Williams. Welcome to the Windy City. They have built a team for you. You don't want to be there. You want nothing to do with that organization. They have a very, very short leash. Caleb Williams, number two on my list of top five quarterbacks who have the most amount of pressure in April. Also, by the way, because the Bears don't ever have good quarterbacks. Right. Welcome to the world of expectations. Thank you, Dan. Another one. Thank you. I mean, you get the he game. Had, had plenty of them yep. last year, but yep. okay. Yep. Not a bad choice. I actually oh, agree with that. Right. How about that? Uh, because, See? Uh, part, uh, part because not just the number one overall pick, but like I think a lot of people, myself included, agree that he's being set up to succeed, which adds to the pressure, right? Yep. So, good well choice. Done. Thank no, you. Number one. Aaron Rodgers. Show me something. Your hall pass is up. You had it for a year. It's up. Now show me something. Don't show me the MVPs you want in Green Bay. Show me something with the New York Jets. That's what I want to see. Pressure is on. And Mina, I have a problem. I think the Jets are going to be good. Oh, Lord. <laughs> oh, Lord. Don't do this to yourself, Stu. I know. It's I'm early. I, it's I, April. I, I care yeah. about you. I know. Bills are um, down. Dolphins haven't made many changes. They've lost some guys on defense. The Patriots are the worst team in the NFL. Well, Stu, let me ask you this. You said, he, he, don't show me your MVPs from Green Bay. What if he shows you his VPs from Washington, D.C.? <laughs> Stu? I was waiting what? for that. <laughs> You guys are un oh boy. Um, That's fair with Aaron, right? Yeah, I think it's totally fair. Because especially because that roster is super. It's like as all in as all in gets, right? You got a bunch of veterans who have injury history, who are good but have an injury history. One year deals, uh, you know, for the likes of Mike Williams and Tyron Smith. They they are definitely uh, situated to win now, and so he has to meet the moment and obviously he's coming back from this horrible gruesome injury right. a few months ago dominique introduced me to something i did not know existed which is like a 400 million dollar tin of money for performance based uh yeah. overachievement or underachievement and i read the list and aaron Rodgers had the lowest payment but i didn't of 81 dollars <laughs> but i didn't even know mina that there was actually some sort of salary adjuster there that had been collectively bargained where these guys can actually make decent money if they vastly outperform their contracts. Yeah, Dominique actually brought it up in the context last year of the uh, discussion about how to pay running backs, which I thought was really smart of him. Obviously, Dominique thinks a lot about these things. Um, it is something like it isn't really talked about a lot or, or super well understood, but for guys on rookie contracts in particular, it's pretty meaningful money Purdy was brought up right I, I, I'm sure it was at the top I don't know if he was the top uh earning over seven hundred thousand dollars like that's a lot to him based on his salary um yeah, as far as Rogers goes the 81 dollars I mean do you think they're actually going to write him a check it's like when you get a um like a class action check for 10 cents and you 
have that debate over whether or not to act. Is it, is it worth my time? I, I just thought it was a funny reminder, <laughs> right? I, I thought it was a funny, pinging, stinging reminder for Aaron Rodgers to check through his finances and just see like, oh, paid more poorly for my performance than anyone in yeah. the league. <laughs> $81. Yeah, it's, it's like that's not that $20 burns. a play. Like, that's, I mean, yeah. It's not bad. <laughs> $20 a play. This interview with Mina Kimes is presented by LinkedIn Jobs. That was excellently done the way that you snuck that in there. Can we rapid fire through three minutes of football with you? Are you ready to do this fast? Yeah. Do you don't want to talk about the digs trade? Or do you want to do Yes, this? I wanted to do digs first because that is not, it would appear that's not salary cap, dead money. Everyone's a finance expert. You tell me. It feels like, oh, the relationship was bad there. Just like Stephen A. Smith said it was. I think it's really interesting from the Bills side. From the Texans side, you get it. It's pretty obvious. You don't even have to really, like, you know, they're all in. It's a great wide receiver trio. They're, I mean, it's a little bit, there's a little bit of risk to it because of Diggs' age and his performance last year, which kind of gets to the Bills side. But yeah, I, I've seen it compared to what the Chiefs did with Tyree Kill, right? Where they decided to trade Hill to Miami. And move on because they wanted to both keep the window open for Mahomes, but also extend it by getting younger on defense. Faster. And they had a lot of, I'm not, no, no, no. And they had a lot of faith in Mahomes' ability to play with a somewhat limited set of wide receivers. And people are asking, you know, the same thing apply to Buffalo, even though they don't have a Travis Kelsey in Buffalo. But I would say it's not really the same thing because when you traded Tyree Kill, not only did you get significantly more in return, right? Um, that was also in part because Tyree Kill wanted that monster contract extension, which is what he got from Miami. Not the case with Stephon Diggs. They already paid him. And as you said, they absorbed this massive, massive cap hit of $30 million. I think it was $31 million, which is the most ever for a wide receiver in terms of dead cap hit, which suggests that it was it's not similar to the Hill trade because it's it's not about paying him, not about that mammoth return. They really did not want him on his football team. So is it about football? Well, in the last eight games of the previous season, he averaged just over 43 yards per game under five targets. He was kind of being phased out of the offense. So certainly that plays into things. He is 31 years old. I still think he's a really good wide receiver, but his game is on the decline. But to me, if you're taking that kind of cap hit, especially if your team that is supposed to compete in the Super Bowl in the present tense, it has to be about more than football. Pop goes the weasel. I'm really digging that trade. Get out. Oh, God. Get out. Uh, yeah, that's right. Mina, you want to do uh, th th this because it's so interesting, the mechanics of this. Diggs yeah. made Josh Allen matter from where I was looking. Obviously, his growth had more to do with a lot of things than just that. But is Diggs' last, I don't know, was it the last act of his career to drop the pass that would have ended <laughs> up saving all of everybody there? Because, I, I mean, that's a championship-worthy team. Yeah, I don't think that was his last act, but uh, it is certainly something that will be remembered. Um, you know, he uh, it's you don't get Josh Allen without Steph this version of Josh Allen without Stephon Diggs early in his career. That trade was super astute on the part. Obviously, it worked out for Minnesota as well because they drafted Justin Jefferson. But for, for the Bills, it was so integral to Josh Allen's development, which is something to keep in mind as we consider these young rookie quarterbacks coming to the NFL, how meaningful it is to have not just a number one wide receiver, but a number one wide receiver like Stephon Diggs, who's this great route runner. He's so good at getting open. He's got really good hands. Uh, but I, I do think, you know, there are legitimate questions about his performance at the end of his time in Buffalo and how important he was to the offense. Um, Josh Allen, he, do, he, he doesn't need him anymore in the sense that, like, he doesn't need Stephon Diggs in particular, but he does need someone, and God knows they don't have anyone right now. Are you dancing? Are you... If there's a sound effect going on, I can't hear it. And all I see is Dan, like, <laughs> rhythmically bobbing his head in silence. Oh, now I hear it. <laughs> this whole time, has there been music playing while I was talking? Because I didn't hear it, so. <laughs> I actually kind of like doing it without the music, because I didn't feel, like, the pressure. <laughs> you said no to me when I asked you to speed it up. You're still furious because you lost the quiz. <laughs> Stugatz asked a question before we kicked Amin out of here, and he wasn't allowed to be a part of the fun Marrow interview because of just what an undetailed dipshit he was in Jesus. terms of judgment. I uh, held this place down for you when you were gone, by the way. <laughs> thank you. Where's his thank you? Thank oh. you. Thank you. There it is. Thank you. Held this place down. He was step Dan. It, 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 you mean that literally? Like it was it I was like gonna that. it was gonna soar into the sky to great riches and instead you held it down? <laughs> I wasn't step Dan, I was the Dan that stepped up. Step Dan was a good bit. Where was my real Dan? <laughs> Can I call you Dan? <laughs>
Went out to get a pack of cigarettes, never came home. Uh, <laughs> no, you know but what? I did. I did. I treated come y'all home. like my own. I did come home, and now you're sitting, still sitting on the couch. It's awkward, honestly. With terrible judgment. The kids with, are like, with what, the t- "Where were you, man? All I didn't right. learn how to ride a bike. I didn't play catch with you." At the end of that segment about Lavar Ball, where he showed that truly terrible judgment. We'll get to that in a second because I believe he deserves more of a burial than the one that he got. Stugatz asked me the question of, do you think LeVar Ball would have been happier if he had to make a choice, if his shoes were great or his kids were? <laughs> no, that, no, no, that's, that's He could only have one. No, he'd, he'd definitely take his kids, for sure. Like, you sure? Are you yeah, sure? Well, you ruined it when you do it No, that no, no, way. but like, no, I'm not saying that in like, oh, he's a father, he wants his kids. No, no. His whole thing is like, I made these superstar athletes. His thing was these never. These things I, came from me. Yeah, his thing was never. I made superstar shoes. Right. Right. Like the shoes thing is that that was flying too close to the sun because it's like the next iteration of like I made these superstar athletes. What's next? We're gonna have our own shoe company. We're gonna have our own apparel thing. Those are all ancillary. His main thing was like, yo, my balls produced. Three balls. The balls. <laughs> Three balls. elite bigger, basketballs. B- bigger balls. Well, two, really. Bigger balls. He, he was <laughs> trying to take bigger, Poor big jealous. baller brand to great riches, but the whole train derailed, and mm-hmm. you deserve further burial for not knowing the important details. You had details. You just it, you all the important ones totally eluded you. You didn't ask for important details. You asked for details. I gave you details. Mm-hmm. Again, they work for me, so. <laughs> Too close to this. I still hold that it was a more fun place when he existed. We can we can hold two thoughts in our heads, ladies and gentlemen. For some he, people, he could have said mm. for he some. said he said something that was deplorable, but also overall said many things. Many deplorable things. Weren't there a couple? Oh, you're, the, you're, the, you're the detail king. You let us know. <laughs> Wait, what, what voice it's was your that? Topic. Whose <laughs> voice was that? It's my voice. It's my incredulous I, I, voice. I, there was stay in your lane. Yeah, you told Christine Leahy to stay in her lane when having a conversation on Colin Cowherd's show. That was one. That was kind of mild in comparison to the rest. Yeah, I, I, let's that, switch gears. Which is not great. Yeah, like I, I think I think again, there are a lot of examples. Some of them are way more salacious than others. But overall, when you take the totality of the Lavar Ball experience, they also because it wasn't it wasn't like every time he got on a mic, he said something sexist or whatever. He was dangerous. He He's was the, he was the Dion Waiters of saying something sexist, oh. and that he was a volume shooter. So yes. there were so many things out there. Yes, but there were a lot of sexist things. Don't yeah, well, you know, the name of Dion. Sorry for this. this Dion caught astray there for sure. Okay, not. Sure, that wasn't that the was point. Champ. The Don't point was that. volume shooter. I volume. love Dion Wade. Say volume the shooter. The second best DW in the history of the Heat. I like that wow. this is the content that yeah. everyone's no, taking this... objection to. The Dion Wade. The Dion Wade is part of dare you. How dare you? Thank you, Jessica. You and me should go on a thank you tour. Darrell Wright would like a word, by the way. Top five. (laughs) CT5. (laughs) You see what they got fired up on? Let's talk Dion Waiters. Let's talk Heat players with the initials DW. I'll get a top five together. Darrell Wright is better than Dion Waiters. But really what happened here was Amin was just talking about a topic in general terms, and you do this, Dan. You asked a bunch of serious follow-ups. I mean, and that's why he's frustrated with you. Thank you. Thank you, Stugatz. <laughs> Not serious follow-ups. <laughs> thank, just follow-ups. Okay, give the thank well, you song I, for Stugatz, please. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. To be, to be fair, I don't do think it. Dan was the one who brought up the fact that he went away. That was part of the thing that Amin initially brought up, and Dan was like, why did he go away again? It was kind of follow- baked that's into the, the, see that, that's the follow-up baked right into right. the conversation, mm-hmm. though. Natural follow-up. Not, not, Dan right. wasn't looking but for... Was, I have to defend When you're talking in general one. terms, though, it's unnecessary. I mean... All right, we could just ignore everything, then. I have to be genuinely honest here. The only reason I asked him is because I did not know. It seems an innocent enough mistake. I did not know at the time the details of why he was gone. I do know that there must have been details that mattered, given that a huge content-spouting source for all of sports entertainment had latched on to LeVar Ball and made a whole bunch of money off of every time he appeared somewhere. It was kind of dangerous because it's unhinged dad. 
Flag on the play. <laughs> what? You didn't know the details? You could say, I didn't remember the details, but Dan, if you're saying, I never knew why no, he went no, away. No, no, I'm not, yeah. no, I'm not claiming ignorance. I knew that there was some sexist things that he had mm-hmm. said and done, I, but this is why I asked you, what are the details? Yeah, bad timing. You knew the details. <laughs> no. No, I... Apparently you did. Well, I thought you... I, didn't know the details. Now, who who knows what yeah, but, details? Yeah, but he's not who supposed knows? to know the details. He's talking in general terms. But Dan is supposed to know the details. Hey, somebody around wow. here. He is. Somebody right. around here. I knew the details. The deets. <laughs> Let's, no, switch. Let's switch gears. They're bad details. I do have a top five DWs in Heat history if we want it. Thursday Thunder. Oh, wow. Wow. A really? violent Steam switch rolling. of the gears. Ooh. Violent <laughs> switch. Crank top five that DWs. Thing. Yo. I want it. That's right. It's Thursday Thunder, and it is brought to you by DraftKings or DraftKings. Stay tuned because you'll hear more about DraftKings and all it has to offer throughout the show. <laughs> DraftKings, the crown is yours. Tony, what do we got? All right. We are in the women's hoops game. We've got Iowa Moneyline as our first part of our parlay here. I'm going to lay out for the ball. <laughs> trying to cue thunder but i cue thank you thank you <laughs> good work as always second Thunderous part block. of our parlay we've got over 13 and a half points for kate martin in that iowa versus UConn game okay mark chris cody we're uh, we're What's up? Uh, we, we you know DraftKings wants this to be professionally produced so that we can be producing a good gambling segment that honors their name and craft DraftKings. <laughs> <laughs> We're trying to sell, you know, it's a competitive marketplace. DraftKings is going to Draft be. DraftKings. <laughs> wants to be one of the big winners in the gambling money game, and they want a sponsored segment that is well produced. DraftKings. <laughs> all you got to do is put the thunder at the right that's time. It, yeah. Like, all you got, that's all you got to do. It's just, you know, just play some plates. Yeah. I'm looking at a lot of things on your screen, Dan. There's a ton of things on your screen. The last thing on my screen is over 15 and a half points for Camila Cardoso for your Lady Gamecocks. There goes the Gamecocks. I wanted to circle back on a couple of things, Stugatz, that happened uh, while I was away uh, in the explosion of women's basketball into the biggest sports rattling ratings thing that there is during the streaming time. Like, just knocking out of the way all sorts of World Series and Stanley Cup Final, and it's like, oh, wait a minute. So when we give some equal access to some equal things, look at what's just been birthed. A money spout of ratings. Holy. (laughs) To see the numbers that Iowa LSU brought, and then... To enjoy the subsequent conversations, Stugatz, of many people who have loved this for a long time saying, welcome all, it's kind of uncomfortable here because you guys have dumb conversations on Undisputed, uh, where Paul Pierce is a newcomer, has to say something, and we're not quite equipped to talk about women's sports the way they deserve because we just got here. Like, a lot of us just got here and don't know what we need to know about this sport, but they've been telling us, oh, this is fun over here and showing us with Final Four tickets that are selling much better and and more expensively for the women and with more star power because, and I know Jamel got a lot of people mad here uh, last week when she said this, but I've already seen this happen in my lifetime and it was amazing to watch. Larry Bird and Magic Johnson fought at the top of college sports for the money and then fought at the top of uh, making the NBA matter because it was a white guy and it was a black guy. And, and Magic Johnson made his life what he did after that, which is acceptable to everybody because he birthed an entire sport right there with, oh, that's the black guy everybody can like. It's Magic Johnson. And look at what he does when it's against Larry. And that's competitive sportsmanship. Those games were on tape delay when those guys started to make that league into what it is. And the race was an enormous part of it, and it was interesting. But in these times, in these times, it's going to have some poison around it, especially when it comes to black women, because I see what happens to Jamel when she comes around here. That's one of the strongest people I've ever met in my life. When she dares to say, 
the most obvious thing, which is Caitlin Clark, Clark, it helps her to be a white star, because of course it does. Because what, do you know what the NBA would be right now if it would just be that Luka, that Luka and Jokic were white Americans, just white Americans. Oh my God. Can the, the NBA right oh, now be printing money? Oh my yep. God! <laughs> Jokic it, would still be bored. Oh yes, yes. If his name was Nick Jokic <laughs> and Luke Dantich, <laughs> oh my God. Nick and Luke. Oh my God! Can you imagine? Nick and Luke. The, uh, it's a boy band. But but so of course <laughs> some some men get to the conversation and we're newcomers and we don't and so it becomes about talking about the most macro things because we can't talk about the details because we haven't been watching and studying for the last six years. Well. Amin and I were laughing yesterday kind of off air where I said, we don't know how to cover this sport. We don't know how to cover women's sports in general where everyone is saying and repeating, Caitlin Clark shoots like Steph Curry. Okay. And that's all they've well, got. But so, so just from that, just from Hoosiers, middle America, I don't know the difference between Iowa and Indiana. Just from whatever Hoosiers <laughs> was supposed to represent in basketball. What do you mean – that we've got a giant star who can make nine threes in a game from out there with Steph Curry range, and nobody can do anything about it. Not even Kim Mulkey. Well, no, hold on. You missed. The, you missed a couple no, episodes. I know. No, I know there was Kim, detailed analysis on how poorly Kim, defended. Kim Mulkey is terrible at coaching. That's what I learned. Okay. You want to talk about uh, how they to, won the championship? How to, how to parachute in? You know how to parachute into women's sports? And like, I I watched that game and I was like, this is the worst coach. I've ever seen. You Terrible. have to do something differently against Caitlin Clark. You can't allow her to keep doing that. You can't go under on screens. That is absurd. That's like I've never watched her play before. That's that's the kind of coaching job she okay, did. Okay, so not surprising. That's how you do it with me. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Big's got a hedge, too. Big's but got she, a hedge. She played against her last year and won. No? Yeah, like there's something. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, it, you know what happens what? when people play games and what? then they lose? What? You, Usually, they go back and make adjustments. Right. And so, as a coach, you have to adjust. To you the have to adjust to the adjustment. Yes, right. and she made zero adjustments. She just hoped, hoped it would go right. Thank you. And then had a girl who was on an IV earlier that day. Hey, you know what? You guard the best player in all the land, with no help, on an island, on an island, by herself. Is there a place that we can discuss intelligently around? Uh, everything that happened with Angel Reese and that is happening with this kind of stardom? Yes, that we're off the looking glass. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> no, we tried here, Dan. It yeah. didn't go well. Dude, let me tell you something. I chose going viral, and let me tell you, I'll go viral a million times over for my jump shot before I go viral like he does. He's getting roasted. See, the thing is, <laughs> Angel Reese wants to be the villain but the villain has to live with the reality of villainy. Let me explain. That's it. That's all I got. That's all you got? <laughs> You're Come on. There. I, was, I was hoping you would do no, a whole I can't. essay. I, I was hoping you would do 90 straight seconds. 90 straight seconds. I of thought Lacho. you were quoting yourself. I, you had the I, floor. Lacho. You had the floor. You, you asked for your the take, ball. Your take was similar to his. What take? On Angel. Oh, no. No, she's an angel. That's my take. <laughs> and I'm glad she's coming to the WNBA because she's going to make more money. Ain't that right, Jess? <sighs> we don't know how to cover this. <laughs> Who is we? 